Welcome back. Richard, it's good to see you this morning, sir. Good morning. How are you doing? I am doing okay. We um we have a topic today that we, we've we've done a few podcasts on in the in the recent last few months or so. Um, we're going to talk about this idea of um, estrangement again. Um, you know, it, it's and it part of it is because it seems to be an increasingly I don't know, increasingly common, uh, increasing more pervasive thing that's happening. I don't know which which is the best way to phrase it, but um, it's happening more and more often. And, um, you know, this idea that kids, uh, you know, especially adult, you know, one's adults, children um, are becoming estranged or are estranged from their parents and, and they are choosing to um, stay away or, or have uh, removed their parents from their life in a variety of ways. And um, so we're going to talk about that again today. Yeah, we're in the first week of November and going into the holiday season. And this seems like, a, we've talked about estrangement before, but it seems like a, a, a relevant topic now with the holidays approaching and we, we have to deal with these difficult family relationships and talk about them. What struck what struck us about this article? There's a, there's a, there's two aspects about this article that I found poignant and and relevant. And one is that, um, as you say, it's it's more and more common that adult children are uh, separating from their parents. And uh, I think of two things. One is that we have this phenomenon known as blocking. I'm going to block you on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And that's a way of mm -hmm. separating from you. It's, right. an, it's an electronic separation, right. right? And that is about, um, from what I understand, because I've never blocked somebody because I don't know how to do those things. Um, <laughs> um, I've never blocked anybody. But what I understand is that's like the, that's like the nuclear op. That, that's like the ultimate insult is for you to be blocked. Yeah. Right? If you're blocked, you're you're off the island. Okay. Yeah, and 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 you know, let's be clear that sometimes blocking someone is appropriate. You know, there there are certainly times when you're you know if you're being harassed by someone or if someone is is you know sort of bombarding you with with stuff something that's causing you a great deal of distress or you know there's some abuse or, or trauma or something like that going on. You know, absolutely. You, you know blocking someone is the is the is maybe an appropriate way to go as you said it's sort of the nuclear option because it's saying that you know it's putting a um not necessarily a, a final finality to it but it's putting some kind of a period at the end that says you know from where i am right now we're done you no longer exist if right. you don't exist in my electronic life you no longer exist that's yeah. one problem second is there's all this talk today about boundaries. Everybody wants to have boundaries on everybody. Well, I have to set, I have to have my boundaries. You know, we keep hearing this. And then the third thing is disre I, I'm being disrespected. Okay. The, this idea that you've offended me. And so now I have to separate from you. Okay. So there's, there's three elements here that bother me about this whole thing about estrangement and it's blocking, it's setting boundaries and being disrespected. Right. And, what this author, this author is a teacher, uh, by, by, she's a teacher, but she's also a writer. So she writes about this stuff. And um, she begins by, by saying that it is millennials and Gen Zers. So millennials would be people born in the 1980s and, and the following generation. So these are the children of baby boomers mm -hmm. seem to be choosing this, what we call the nuclear option, which is to separate completely from your parents. Quite a bit of it is going on. 7% of adult children are estranged from their mothers and 27% are estranged from their fathers. Yeah. And most of the people, and, and this is what she says, okay? And this is where, when I read this article, 
I thought, wow, I'm not sure that I agree with all of this. And usually I'm pretty agreeable. But when I read this article, I said, this, there's, some, I, there's something about this that just doesn't ring true. She says that most cite their parent, most adult children who separate, cite their parents' toxic behavior and how it affected them for years. And then she writes, and I'm going to quote this. She says, after all, I know from my own experience, so this writer has gone through this, I know from my own experience, it's a gut-wrenching one to make that nobody takes lightly. I think there are people who take it lightly, okay? And, yeah. and so I'm not sure because... She wrote this article after talking to two fellow teachers. She was in a, they were ran into each other after school. And these two fellow teachers whose adult children had decided to shun them. So here's, here's two teachers and they're talking, they're, our, our adult children no longer talk to us. And she said the parents had claimed they had no clue as to why they were being shunned. And then the author writes this. She says, I didn't point out to them that they weren't taking a lick of responsibility for what had transpired. And I thought, are you sure about that? <laughs> you know, you're, you're assuming, why did, why did you assume that these parents, A, had done something and B, were denying it? Right. When in fact, maybe they hadn't done anything and their children are just a little too sensitive. So as I read, as I started to read this article, I said, like, wow, this, uh, there's something about this that I don't like. Okay? Yeah. I, and I think it's I think it's very difficult because oftentimes, you know, the the adult children who who mm -hmm. become estranged from their parents, mm -hmm. um, they they sort of perceive it as a, a very serious thing. Um, you know, now whether or not they sit and contemplate it the way that we would encourage them to contemplate it and, and think right. about things the way that we would encourage them to think about it, you know, that, that set aside. Mm -hmm. um, I think that they, they believe that this is the only way that I can, you know, I, I can be relieved of this distress, this, you know, to avoid this toxicity or whatever it is that they feel like they're experiencing. And, and I think that, you know, so I, I believe that they, they think they're taking it serious, but the the problem is, and I I often um, I often blame our own field, our our own you know our own careers for this because you know this idea of well you don't have to have anybody in your life that makes you feel un, you know that that you don't that don't support you or the people you don't have to have anybody in your life if they don't make you happy or if they don't make you feel great all the time or you know if they if anybody who in your life that's criticizes you you don't have to have any of those people in your life because you know you you set those boundaries and you say you don't need those people in your life i i you know and that has come through the self-help literature for years now you know mm -hmm. for, for decades and i think that that has been taken to a to an ultimate level I agree. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's be honest. Um, there, there is no, there is no life where you can remove everyone who doesn't make you happy all the time. I mean, you, you're going to have a boss that's going to make you unhappy. Sometimes you're going to have um, a boss that puts demands on you, or you're going to have a teacher that is expecting something of you that you're not going to be, you know, that you're not going to want to do. Mm -hmm. And you're you're going to be unhappy about that. And you have to learn to deal with that. And just because your parents, you know, bringing it back to this particular topic, just because your parents say things that are hard to hear or say things that don't exactly fit with what you want, doesn't mean it's toxic. It doesn't mean that it's um, harmful. It doesn't mean that you that you have to go that nuclear option of, um, you know, it becoming estranged and blocking them and getting away from them and all that kind of stuff. So I think that this, this idea that, um, you know, it's very likely that a parent could have absolutely no idea why their adult child is making this decision. While at the same time, the adult child thinks that it's completely obvious why this is happening. And right. um, that, you know, that this is the only 
logical step that they could take next. Right, right. And that brings us to one, I think, to the key, one of the key features of this whole um, issue of shunning or estrangement. And mm -hmm. and in this, she said she she says that um nobody nobody breaks up because of just one incident. She said, and, and I quote here again, she says, I didn't explain to them that nobody terminates a relationship with a parent based on one, two, or even three bad episodes, but on a lifetime of them. And what I'm fearful of is that I, I know that there are many occasions where an adult child will end a relationship with a parent over a single comment. Well, and, and I think that the 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 concern that the I'm, I'm teetering on the word danger um, in her comment there is that um, she again, she she may be correct in saying that. But what happens and, and we know that this happens is that um, there's a single incident that sort of triggers it. And, and, and then what people tend to do is they tend to, you know, sort of adjust and, and look at memories through an alternate lens that begins to find additional support for this decision that they've made. So, you know, the, we, we talked about an article some time ago where, um, the 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 mother-in-law um yes. made a comment yeah. about the the the, the daughter-in-law and um it was a you know the mother-in-law acknowledged that she um apologized right away <clears throat> and that she didn't mean it the way that it may have sounded or the, may, the way it was taken um but it didn't matter the the her son and her daughter-in-law became estranged and you know decided not to have any any relationship with her anymore what then happens is they will look back and say well you know what there was this one incident that sort of triggered all of that but you know what i remember when i was you know 15 mom made these comments i remember when we first got together you know i didn't exactly feel real comfortable when i was at their house because i felt like i was being judged and i felt like this was happening and so even though those feelings may not have necessarily been as as well formulated before once that decision is made because of a particular incident or something all of a sudden now they're looking back at the this history in a different from a different lens and they're starting to mount evidence for why for supporting their decision to become estranged um is that legitimate I, well, no, not that I think it's legitimate, not necessary. No, but from the adult child's perspective, it's legitimate. Um, I think that it needs to, this is where we need therapists and we need people who, who sort of professionals to be involved to help with that. But um, so that they can tease through some of those, some of those issues um, because no, typically it's not legitimate, you know, if that problem then was so bad, why wasn't anything done then? Why is it that now all of a sudden your whole life has been so horrible that you can't have anything to do with these people when evidence up until this point suggests that it was just fine? Oh, okay. Yeah, that uh, because the 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 uh, episode that you cite with the daughter-in-law and, and you know she made the mother the mother her mother-in-law made one comment that was not meant to be anything but supportive. Uh, the the daughter-in-law misinterpreted it. And within a few days, they had ended their relationship with her over that single comment. Right. And what, what this author in this art of the article is saying is that this is a lifetime of mm -hmm. emotional abuse or physical yeah. abuse or something. This is many, many years uh, accumulated a recurring pattern of abuse or neglect. What we're talking about here is there are people, there are adult, there are adult children who are terminating their relationship with their parents over a single episode or two or phrase or or word that isn't a sufficient explanation of estrangement. In fact, 
to me, it feels like the child is punishing the parent. It's used as punishment. It's not, they're not separating from their parents for their own emotional safety. They're, they're yielding a weapon here. Uh, and, and it's usually a grandchild. In this case, it was about the grandchild, the, the one that you just cited. Mm -hmm. uh, it was about their relationship with the grandchild. And so to me, this feels like the child, the adult child is punishing the parent for some misdeed. Uh, I'm not being respected. Uh, my boundaries are, are being violated. And that's a, and, and I think we need to think about that, that you're not just seeking to avoid continuing a lifetime of pain. You're now punishing your parent for some misdeed that you feel they committed because this right this writer made the decision to separate from her mother. She was in her 40s. And she had been through years of therapy, investigating and trying to sort this out. And she had two children of her own. So this wasn't a 21-year-old or 25-year-old who just got miffed because her parents said something and disagreed with her. This is after 20, over 20 years of therapy and maturity that she said, I, I have to, I have to move away from this relationship because it's too, it was the only option left to her. She had tried everything else. It was the only option left. That's not the case where the other couple after one comment said, oh, we need to, we need some space. We need to separate from you. Right. Yeah. It, it's very different. And, um, and I, I think I've shared before perhaps a long time ago, you know, I, I had a similar situation with my biological father and, mm -hmm. um, and had to set some limits and um, what was more or less removed from him, you know, removed him from uh, being, at least being a very active part of, of my life. And, but I was, you know, in my thirties and, and it was because of things that he was doing that was actively in, in my perspective, at least harming my kids um, in a variety of ways. And so right. I had to set those limits. That is very different than a 19 year old doing that. That is right. very different than a, you know, even a, a 25 year old doing that. Mm -hmm. um, especially when, um, again, up until that point, um, things had been okay. Things had been fine. Things had, mm -hmm. you know, they spent lots of time together. They, they did lots of things together. And then all of a sudden, one decision or one thing happens and everything, all of that goes out the window. That's right. That's right. You have this relationship for 15 or 18 or 20 years. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly one thing, and I was thinking about what you said earlier, and I hadn't thought about it before. And that's why I asked you the question, but you're right. What some people I'm thinking now, and I hadn't thought about this before, when you said, you justify, you go back and you recalibrate all of those little slights mm -hmm. that didn't really matter before. Right. But now you said, oh, so then you go back and you say, oh, so he meant this and this and this and this and that. No, no, you're, you're going back and rewriting history. Right. That's not what happened, but you're rewriting it. And so what you were saying there is that there, a, a person will, will recalibrate, will recalculate all these interactions and put them in a more negative light. Right. And then use that accumulated, that reinterpretation of your history to justify your present decision. Right. It, it, uh, it, from that, from that perspective, the, right. even the 19 or, or 25 year old or however the, the young person will say, well, no, it wasn't because of that one thing that was just the most recent thing. Right. Or all these other, other things that happened Right. As they're yeah. they're they're looking for that confirmation bias of looking, right. you know, rewriting history, as you said, to to make it to make it fit. And, and you know, we'll just throw in here real quick right now that um, you know, of course there are times, even with a 19-year-old and a 25-year-old or whatever, of course there are times when the history of between the parent and the child is so significant and so serious that estrangement may be necessary. Absolutely. We're not, we're not denying that there may be those situations. Right. Mm -hmm. um, what we're talking about are situations where, um, where it's not, you know, where, and, and we know um, professionally, we know personally people who have gone through this where 
um, a, a child, a, a, a newly adult child, has made such a decision for no, without, you know, a, a significant right. amount of, uh, of, of reason, you know, there, there just isn't a reason for it. And so, you know, we know this happens. Um, we see, we have seen this happen. Um, and so we're talking about those situations, not the ones where, you know, where we would even recommend being uh, being estranged. You know, we have certainly recommended that to patients before. So that's know, right. I don't want to confuse those two things. Right. And and what you're talking about, there was a study in, done in Cambridge in um, 10 years ago or so, 2015, that, that 77% of those surveyed said that it was emotional abuse that led them to be estranged from their mothers and 59% to be estranged from their fathers. So a word of caution here. People are separating because of emotional abuse. Right. So for those parents who want to punish their children into submission and feel that they need to have this absolute authoritarian control, be very careful that you don't cross the line into what might be interpreted by your children as emotional abuse, right. because that could come back to haunt you. Okay. So be careful about, about that. Second, we, all of us long to have warm, loving parents who understand us, who care about us, who care what we think, how we feel, what we say. Parents who guide us, support us, come to our games, come to our concerts. And we feel cherished and loved, not indulged, not spoiled, but we feel like our parents truly do care about us. Mm -hmm. When we make the decision to that we don't have that parent, and that, I think that's what you were saying, is that you made a decision at some point <clears throat> that that's not the parent you had. Right. Then you had to separate. Right. But how many years? What you were in your thirties. Right. When you uh, and that was episode after episode after episode after episode that was now occurring in another generation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And so this was a long agonizing process, one that you delayed as long as you could until the evidence was so overwhelming that you only had a single option. Right. What we're saying is that in many other cases, and in particularly in cases where you don't have that history, that there are probably many other options between being um, continued to be hurt versus ending the relationship, what you consider being hurt and ending the relationship. There's a lot of territory between those two things. I, I, absolutely. And, and I think that, you know, mm -hmm. one, of the, one of the things that, that we would certainly encourage people to consider is if you're getting to a point where you feel as though you may have to move in this direction is, is to talk to a professional and work through some of it. You know, mm -hmm. I, I think that, um, you know, one of the things that, that I know I do, and I, I believe you do as well, is um, if a person comes in and, and is talking about this, um, I, I will tell them, you know, I want to, I want to ask you and, and kind of walk through some of this with you. Um, and some of these questions are going to be challenging. Some of the things I'm going to ask you are going to be challenging, not because I doubt how you feel, but I want to make sure that you are, you know, you're thinking about all of the pieces. And so you walk through, so, you know, this incident happened or whatever is going on. And now you're looking back at your life and you're talking about this emotional or, or, or uh, abuse or this neglect that you maybe have felt, you're saying that you have felt your entire life. Um, let's go through some of that and let's talk about some of that so that we can make sure that you're not um, not imposing your current emotional state onto a, a history of experiences that don't warrant that um, that lens or that that tinting um, from the from the current situation. And, and a therapist can help you work through that just to make sure that you're making the decision that you that you should be making. Right. It, Today, you know, despite the fact that the world is very small and we have technology and we can, you know, we can follow people and we can see what they're doing through social media and all that kind of stuff. At the same time, it is very easy to live in the same small town as someone 
and have completely no um, connection with them. Right. Despite the fact that you're related and that you are, are, are that connect, you know, that close to them in the past, um, you, you can very much live in close proximity, but have absolutely no engagement or relationship with them at all. So you have to be right. careful. Right. And that's what we're, that's what we're saying here is that if you're going to press the nuclear button, if, if you're going to push that button to terminate your relationship, these important family relationships that should be lifelong. Yes, they're difficult. Yes, they're frustrating, but they should, but we should do everything we can to maintain them. There are, there are times when you can't, we, we freely acknowledge that in, in those cases, like with this writer where she spent 20 or 30 years trying to make this difficult decision, or in your case where you spent 20 years you know, going through this experience, if there's a long and recurring pattern of some type of abuse, whether it's emotional, physical, sexual, if, if you've been through this years and years and years, like in this woman's case, her mother kept choosing her paramours, her boyfriends, over the children. Mm -hmm. the, the, she had, she neglected her. This writer's mother neglected her and her sibling so that she could spend time with her boyfriends. Okay. That's, and that recurred over many, 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 many years. That's a long history of abuse and neglect. And sometimes in those cases, maybe you need to. There, it's not a single episode. It's not a single disappointment. It's not a single comment. Mm -hmm. It's not even a disagreement over something that you might feel is important. You know, you you wanted to, uh, you know, you didn't want to go to college. You wanted to get a job and work at or work instead of going to college. A single decision like that should not be sufficient to terminate a family relationship. Because there are many times... And this is my fear. There are many times when there isn't enough right. to terminate the relationship. And I think of things like parental alienation that occurs in divorce. Mm -hmm. Okay, There are parents who actively work against each other. Yeah. That's not a sufficient reason. That's a single time, a single moment in time that um, that 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 is not a sufficient reason to terminate all relationships. Being too sensitive, uh, you're not respecting. I love the phrase. You're not respecting me. Okay, a, a child tells you, "You're not respecting me." If there's been a 20 year history of that, you know, maybe it's time to terminate the relationship. But is there a 20 year history? And I think you need to think about that very carefully. Right. Yeah, and and, and th th there's lots of one of the one of the other reasons I think that it isn't just um, justifiable. For, for taking this step is, you know, um, when you, when you just do it without, again, kind of going back to the idea of working with a, with a professional or something is, you know, so often th there's no acknowledgement or consideration, no real consideration, I should say, they may, they may feel as though they're considering it, but there's no real consideration for what in the world their parents are going through. <laughs> You know, um, a lot of times you, you mentioned parental alienation, you know, it, but when it, when a couple separates, you know, oftentimes the kids will ally with one yeah, parent right. a bit stronger mm -hmm. than the other. Right. Well, if, it, if, it, if it's to the point where now the kid is starting to become estranged, the adult child is starting to estrange from the other parent because of the decision to end the relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you even considering what the other parent is going through? You know, no. if you're not talking mm -hmm. to them, if you're not engaging with them, if you're not hearing them, then how do you even know what the other parent is going through? Right. Um, because believe, believe us when we say, um, even if you want to end a relationship, even if you want a divorce, it's not easy. Right. Even if right. you're the one pursuing it, even if you're the one pushing for it, it is not an easy thing to do to say, um, you know, we've been together for this period of time and now it's going to be over. That is right. not an easy decision for people to make. Right. Um, right. And so when kids say, well, I'm not going to have anything to do with, with him or her anymore because mm -hmm. they did this and that. Well, what was the parent doing when they, you know, what were, what were they feeling? What were they going through when they had to make those decisions? Because those decisions aren't easy to make. Right. I would, and I would say that for anybody, any adult child considering this nuclear option, 
I would I would urge you to be cautious because what about forgiveness? You know, is there no room for grace? You know, you, you talk about I have to give grace. Mm-hmm. We live in a very religious environment here in Central Florida. Where is forgiveness? Where does grace fit in? Where's where's that humility that comes with? Okay, I get it. Do you really know what your parents were going through? What if your parents had other struggles that they chose not to share with you? Do you know everything that was going on? Do you really know what your parents were going through? Um, no, you don't. Uh, you don't know what they were going through. And so um, there's this, and that's what we mean by this distance between, do you really need to terminate the relationship or could there be a place where you could still have a relationship? It doesn't have to be total. It doesn't have to be fully in and it doesn't have to be fully out. There's plenty of space between those two things. So you don't know what your parents were going through. Now, if there's a history that you were neglected by a parent who was negligent or abusive, okay, that's that's an issue. But I would guess that for many of us, that wasn't the case. For many people today in this area, in this era of I'm going to block you or I'm going to ghost you, um, it's very easy to terminate to, to terminate relationships. And it shouldn't be easy to terminate these family relationships. And what I would suggest is that if you're going to separate, if you're going to press that button and terminate a family relationship, you need to be sure that it's worth the price that everyone is going to pay. What I think is forgotten in all of this is that the parent who is being shunned, that's a punishment that you're doling out, right. okay? And there's no other word for it. If right. you, you are you are not just separating from that person, you're taking yourself, you're taking your grandchildren, and that is a punishment. And so the question I would ask is, have your parents done, is there enough history that you feel the need to punish your parent? Right. Um, and because that's what you're doing by, 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 by saying, I, I don't want you in my life anymore. That's sort of the ultimate punishment that I'm, I'm, I'm going to go now going to get revenge. Do you need revenge? And do you really want to punish this person? Are they guilty? Right. And you want to punish them because that's what you're doing. You're you're not just an innocent victim. You're now becoming a perpetrator. Now you're doling out a punishment by withdrawing. And do you really want to do that? Right. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think that is going to be it for today. Um, there, there is, of course, much more to talk about with all of this because we are, as we started out the podcast today, talking about this, we are entering into the holiday season. And so family season. <laughs> But there's going to be a lot of family time, a lot of uh, invitations and opportunities to see people that you may or may not want to see all that much. And so it is an important thing to be thinking about as we as we enter into this these next couple of months. So we'll be talking about it more in the weeks to come. So until then, stay happy, stay healthy and forget to be afraid. <laughs>